Good morning, I'm Bob with TEI Rock Grills and this is uh, Bob's Toolbox Talks. Today we're going to go over one of these elusive creatures called an owner's manual. Every one of our attachments comes with one and I suggest anybody that's around the drill to go through this thing. It doesn't take that long to do it either. First page is your going to be your declaration of conformity which is going to give you uh, the type of drill, the model number, the serial number, uh, a lot of good information on there. It's going to be signed by our chief engineer. And if you thumb through this thing, there's going to be a lot of things we won't get really into on this, but it's something that everybody should read from cover to cover if they're going to be around one of these drills. Uh, first thing is the specifications on it. It's going to give you the gallons per minute that our certain drills need. It's going to give you the horsepower. It's going to give you the model numbers. Uh, like I said, system flow, frequency, the pressure that it should run on, uh, the speed in a perfect world, the torque, the hole size. Pretty good thing to have around. Then we're going to move right into operator warnings. Now keep in mind, all these warnings are in here because somebody did something wrong. And one of my favorite ones in here is do not re-drill any blast hole. How would you like to be the guy that figured that one out? So you got all your equipment cautions there, and you're going to go over the operations page, general operation, and there's one right down here that says never use feed to assist with sluting. That's when you're in an excavator, you put your bucket on the ground, you lift your tracks up, and you turn the thing and set it back down. That has the habit of bending things in our world, so don't do that. Pre-start checks. Just walk around it and make sure all your oils are full. There's no big puddles laying underneath of it. No bolts that fell off, things like that. You know, it, it goes through all that. Uh, bolt torque specifications. Then it goes into a page that gives you where all the hoses go on each of our units. The HEM, the man portables, the MMEs, the skidster mounts, all that. And right up here on top it says uh, the supply hose can be identified by the high pressure filter, except on MP drills, located on the side of the control box. This filter must be changed after the first 50 hours of use and every 500 working hours thereafter. It's in the book, and it shows you where it's at, inside your drill, the high pressure filter. And your operating techniques, percussion drill, Removing the drill rod, operating techniques, rotary drill. We'll probably get into that in later on videos. Traveling with the attachment. If you're traveling with the attachment, make sure that you have the drill steel or pipe securely clamped in the clamp. Don't let it rotate. It will fall out of there. General tips on attachment maintenance. And then you go into the maintenance page. Um, normal operation of the attachment requires daily greasing using a lithium-based high temperature type grease. This is a rotary drill book. The percussion drill book is different than this one a little bit, but this is a rotary drill book. And then looky there, it says the high pressure filter must be changed every or after the first 50 hours of service and every 500 hours or six months thereafter. It's in there twice so far. Uh, hydraulic oil specifications, hydraulic grease specifications. You got a different style of grease for the rotary drills than you do the percussion drills. The percussion drills get a lot hotter than the rotary drills, so it does require a different style of grease. This grease is major important. It has got to be specified and it's got to be right or you're going to buy a lot of parts. Attachment troubleshooting. 
And this page here, this is an interesting page. This gives you all the color codes for all the hoses the TEI uses on their attachment. All them and zip ties on it are not there to make it look like Christmas. They're all there for a reason. And every one of them hoses can be found in here on the color code. Limited warranty, service and maintenance manual forward. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can uh, just kind of read over. And it's not as important as the points that I'm showing out to you. It gives you all the specifications for, like this is for an RDS 550. It gives you the rotation torque, rotation speed in a perfect world, supply pressure, supply flow, um, hydraulic oil specifications again, grease specifications for a rotary grill. I asked our parts man one time, I says, why is the grease specification in here so many times in this manual? He says that's because they need to know that, and if it's in there several times, sooner or later they're going to see it. Again, with the operator warnings, equipment caution, general maintenance. Now's when we come to the good, good stuff here. Daily maintenance. This here is a sheet for the percussion drills. On the percussion drills, one of the couple of the main things that you got to do to these things. One is you've got to grease the front rotation housing every two percussion hours using a molly desulfide high temperature type grease. This is most important to prevent galling and failure of the rotation gears and bearings. Well that makes sense. If you don't grease it, it's going to tear it up. During the first week of operation or after replacement of the accumulator diaphragm, the charge pressure must be checked daily. Once there is evidence that the charge is holding, they must be checked weekly. So we're going to go over diaphragms in another video, but that is one of the difference between the rotor, rotary drills and the percussion drills. Uh, daily swivel maintenance and cleaning. That's in here first. If you're going through a lot of grout seals, there's a reason why you're going through a lot of grout seals. You're not cleaning it properly and you're not maintaining it properly. So this thing gives you a deal of daily swivel maintenance and cleaning and weekly maintenance. The rotary drill, uh, the RDS 550, requires daily greasing of the rotation housing every four hours using a lithium complex high temperature type grease. So you got a different grease for the percussion drill than you do for the rotary drill. Then you got factory recommended parts and replacement schedule. It will give you like the seal kit, the swivel, air swivel, all the bearings, roller bearings, that type of thing. And we got a lot of, uh, a lot of cartoons in here It'll give you a breakdown of the drill, uh, all the parts inside the drill head. And down here in the bottom, there's a square box that gives you the torque of everything on that drill head. So don't overlook that either. Next page is seal layout and how the seals go in it. Then you got a bill of materials. You got mounting slide in here for the HCF and the HCFH, PCF, PCFH, uh, shock sub for the front of the drill, gives you all the parts for that one. Uh, another cartoon of the breakdown of the drill. Then it goes into the feed. And there is a lot of information on our feeds in here. It'll, got a table in here that'll tell you the, the length of them, the change out of them, the overall drill travel, the feed length, and the feed weight. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. All the maintenance, the equipment cautions again, and the general tips on drill maintenance. And it's going to come up to this page right here. 
And believe it or not, that symbol right there is a grease symbol. So if you look at that feed, there's two grease points on there, on them rollers. If that chain wraps around them rollers, there's two grease fittings in there. And this is a diagram how you can get them grease fittings to be in the windows on the outside of the feed and actually get to them. A lot of people forget those are in there. We're going to go over that grease symbol again. It's going to give you the weekly maintenance of it. It's also going to tell you how to tighten the chain up in it. Um, go through all your clamps and breakers, all your parts layout of all that. More clamps and breakers. Then it's going to go into your uh, remote control. If you've got a scan Rico, you can breeze through this, get a little bit more acquainted with it. And then it comes back here, it says downloading ID, pairing PCU, and CU. The little black cable that's about 25 feet long, and it connects the remote control to the uh, valve box. If you don't have that cable, don't even bother reading this because you can't do anything about it. Don't lose that cable, it's very important. Last but not least, it's kind of a, a generic hydraulic schematic on it, but it'll give you some good idea which which valve does what, and this and that and the other. But that's just kind of a brief overview of the repair and maintenance manual of the TEI rock drills. And I can't encourage you guys enough to read this thing because it's got a lot of information if you read it some of the questions that you call up and ask will probably be answered because you read the book so please be safe out there and we'll see you next time thank you